should you expand or extract teeth? First off, I want to know if you've had extractions or expansion done. Leave a comment below. So that's a big question these days. So many people are anti-extraction and I totally get why. People are worried about ruining faces, causing breathing problems, not enough room for your tongue. Orthodontists who know things are worried about too much expansion because of what it can do to the teeth and the gums and the bones. So anyways, we're gonna talk about all those things to help you in your orthodontic journey. So why resolve the crowding in the first place? What's so big of a deal about the crowding? Well, from a health standpoint, crowding in and of itself does not cause cavities, does not cause significant gum disease, periodontal disease like bone loss or gum loss, not necessarily. But what crowding can do, especially if it's significant, we're gonna talk about that in a second, so hang on, because it might help you as you figure out, go to your different providers. Anyways, I'll get there. So crowding can make it harder to clean, can. Just because you have crowding doesn't mean that you're going to have cavities or gum disease. But if your kiddo or you struggle cleaning in between your teeth, you get build up like you know, plaque trapped in there and then it hardens and turns into tartar, you know, those things can be, or usually are primary factors in the development of cavities and gum disease. So from a health standpoint, it might be good to consider straightening those teeth and help in reducing your risk for those things, assuming you can clean better and you actually clean the teeth. Second health benefit potentially. Remember, patients that have deep bites, that means their bottom teeth go way up underneath their top teeth, right? We want all the top teeth to be in front of the bottom teeth. You get these curves. It's called the curve of speed. Well, sometimes people in their bites, the way that they're set up, if they're crowded, the teeth kind of get back behind their top teeth and they push back onto their gums. It's impingement on the gums. Now, long term, if you're biting on your gums all the time, it could lead to gum recession and then eventually damage of the teeth. I've seen it before. Check out our other video in the dangers of the deep bite. That might not be the exact one. The title could be different. Actually, it could cause damage. So there are some health benefits or potential health benefits. That's the way you should interpret that. Potential health benefits by reducing the crowding. Second, functionally speaking, crowding can affect your bite. We want, from a functional standpoint, we want maximum intercuspation. That means that on the side, your top teeth go behind the associated bottom tooth and they get this like mesh, all right? And when we're really crowded, whether that's in the front crowding or in the back crowding, sometimes our bite doesn't fit together as well, particularly in the front if we have excess overjet because we're crowded on the bottom. You know, in theory, right? In theory, the maximum intercuspation in the back, a very slight overjet, what people call overbite, is what we're looking for. And in theory, this is the best for function, you know, chewing, and also stability for your joints, in theory. Okay, finally, it is what everybody really cares about. <laughs> no, I know you care about health and functional, but a lot of people really care about cosmetics, right? Crowding just doesn't look as good. In order to get straight teeth, sometimes with the crowding, you have to get space. And so that's why we come to the dilemma between the two, the question, should we extract to make space or should we expand to make space? So a couple things on that, right? Hang in there, I'm gonna show you this really cool case. Expansion, right? Expansion can be done one of two ways. It can be done with an expander, which I had in our other videos. And usually if we're doing an expander when we're young and sometimes when we're older, like through surgery or by adding screws, you can actually expand the jawbone, not the bottom jaw, right? You, ha you have to do surgery in order to expand this jawbone. But up top, you know, when you're young enough, you can use an actual expander that gets glued in and you can kind of separate the jawbone, create a little bit of extra space. It's good for crossbite correction in particular. But otherwise, you know, just expansion, that could be done with braces. And we are talking about expansion of the teeth, spreading the teeth out, pushing them out with not necessarily, well, not necessarily, you know, separating the jawbone. So you can do that with braces. You can do that with Invisalign. You're spreading the teeth out. And that type of expansion technique is used in a non-extraction protocol because the teeth don't have to spread out maybe as much when you use extraction. So anyways, I wanted to clarify that expansion does not necessarily have to use an expander. You could use braces to try and spread the teeth out. You're just not changing the bone. Now, extractions. What's the general guideline for extractions? Cases where the crowding is less than five millimeters, probably don't need to extract. I'm not saying never. There may be situations, you know, that still benefit from, but from like a space management standpoint, one to four millimeters of crowding, not very much. You don't need to take out a whole tooth for something like that or multiple teeth. Anywhere from five to nine is kind of in between, depending on your current facial balance, 
position of your teeth forward to back. You know, there may be reasons why or why you wouldn't consider using extractions to resolve crowding, that type of crowding. And finally, 10 millimeters or more of crowding in one arch. And I'm going to show you this case. You probably need to consider extraction, or at least they should be a, it definitely is a reasonable consideration. So having said that, remember, stay tuned. I've got this neat case. I'll show you what we decided to do in the extraction versus expansion debate. Here are some pros and cons about expansion and extraction. First, expansion. Pros. One, you know, there's no immediate costs associated with taking out teeth. The second pro is you, you don't have to take out otherwise healthy teeth. Sometimes they're already damaged or like have cavities or crowns and then it's like, eh, root canals. Maybe it's not a crazy idea to take out those damaged teeth. But, you know, we're not just super giddy about taking out teeth. Trust me, orthodontists aren't just like shucking them willy-nilly. This is a serious thing. So you can avoid those two things by not taking out teeth and doing a non-extraction or ex an expansion protocol. Generally speaking, when you do an expansion protocol, it can make your smile wider. Some people get really concerned about, you know, having black spaces called black corridors your, or corridors, buckle corridors. And the more teeth you can see, right, the big, broad Hollywood smile, that's what everybody wants. Sometimes too big is actually not that cosmetic. So you want that balance right? You want balance. But generally speaking, orthodontists assume or consider expansion leading to a broader smile. Now, cons of expansion. One, probably one of the biggest ones is that if, you know, the, the teeth, the healthiest position for the teeth long-term is within the alveolar bone. And that's part of the jaw bone. And the way that you keep it, you know, in the bone is <laughs> by making sure you don't push it out too far. Now, expansion protocol suggests that you just, you know, spread these out. You put the braces on, you let the teeth spread out into the the space. And if we're really crowded, then in order to get that space, it has to spread out really far. And the bone, it doesn't just regenerate as you push the teeth further and further out. You go too far, it can actually go through the bone. And without the bone, if the bone goes away, then the tissue starts going away. So bone loss, gum recession, all if you expand beyond the limits of your bony architecture. So definitely a con of overexpansion if you're, if you're not careful about that. The second is stability. I always argue that the prevention has always argued that, you know, and we've learned more and more that when you spread the teeth out so wide, you've got this soft tissue here, your lips, your cheeks, muscles, things like that. If you push the teeth out into the tissue, then the tissue is going to try and push back. So that's why retainers are really important. Now, retainers are going to be important regardless because even if you took out teeth, here's the highlight, you took out teeth versus not taking out teeth, it's still the safest way to prevent teeth from moving more afterwards is with retainers. So, but arguably spreading teeth out too far pushes you into an unstable tooth position. And as soon as you let go of those teeth, they're just going to collapse back in theory. So pros and cons of expansion. Now, here's some pros of extraction. One, it can help reduce protrusion. That means if your teeth are sticking out, right, you take out teeth and that can create a lot of space for you to bring the teeth back. It can help create more balance for your lip position in your muscles. And in theory, like we just said, the con of expansion is that it can push outside of healthy limits. Well, the pro of extraction can be it helps keep teeth in more healthy positions within the bone. So those are some pros. Cons of extractions, clearly, right? You're losing teeth, which could be healthy otherwise or not. Then of course, there's the cost of, you know, your orthodontist probably is not gonna shut this out for you. So you gotta go see an oral surgeon, you gotta be put under or you know, get injections for that. Okay, so when it comes down to it, expansion versus extraction, which one should you do when trying to resolve crowding? It may not be that simple. The teeth, the bite, the tissue, the lips, it's all related to each other. So you with your provider should consider time, cost, burden of treatment, and the predictability of outcome when deciding whether or not extractions or expansion is better for you. So the long awaited case, here it is. We're going to show you the crowding and we're going to show you the decision that we made in this case and some of the progress and how it's coming along. Here we go. So here's the first. Okay, this is the way that we present. We got a lot of things going on. Do you notice anything? Here's two centrals and then boom, boom. Two canines, those aren't your laterals. Uh-oh, where are the laterals? <laughs> are they still up in here in your bone? And then look down here. This particular incisor is twisted. Here's your canine that's folded over this lateral incisor. And then here's your canine over here that's being pushed out. Ooh, it's a little bit darker in this image. Sorry. All right. Oh, look, we can see there is a tooth on the inside of this tooth or like more towards the tongue. So incredibly crowded right here. Very little overbite. We see the canine right here, but we don't see another lateral over here all right our bite is off right this tooth is supposed to be all the way back in here 
this canine is supposed to be all the way back here. I mean, you can pay attention to the tissue. Look at the tissue right here. This right here, this tissue down here is movable mucosa. And then right next to the tooth is called attached gingiva. The more attached gingiva you have, the healthier this tooth can be. But when it gets really thin, right? When the tissue gets really thin, any movement more out this way could easily lead to gum recession in this spot. Here's the bottom fuzzy picture. Notice how here with all this crowding, despite all this crowd, we are like on, look, appears that we're on the outer portion of this mandible, right? This jawbone right here. And look at how much crowd we have. It's like we said, we have this, this canine right here and this canine is totally twisted. And there's the top. Okay, so we have our 12 year molar all the way through the back here. And then we've got our canine. And look, the lateral incisors back here, canine here, lateral incisors back there. So we are incredibly crowded. Like I said in the video earlier, right? When we have more than 10 millimeters of crowding in one arch, right? So that means if this tooth is seven millimeters wide, seven millimeters wide, it actually might be a little bit wider. That's a total of 14 millimeters of space that we need in order to get these teeth to line up with the rest of them. So we only have one and we're a little, we're even a little bit more crowded right here. So we are more than 10 millimeters of crowding in this spot. If you try to spread this out this way and this way, these teeth in the front are probably gonna, you know, boing, go out that way in order to try and make room for this. It could lead to a very buck tooth smile and or could put a lot of pressure on the gums on the outside here. And like we said, if you get too, if you don't have enough attached gingiva, that, that can make it a little more risky. So in this case, we decided to extract. And if you can see, we'll show this still shot of this right here. But if you take this tooth out here and this tooth out here, well, this tooth can come back here and this tooth can come back here. And then you try to squeeze that in there and you try to squeeze that in there. And this arch back here, really, this shouldn't change too much because you're almost, in this case, you're trading one tooth for another. So this would show that, you know, taking out teeth, they don't cause sleep problems, breathing problems, or they don't cause collapse of arches necessarily, right? Because in this case, which is so crowded that there's gonna be hardly any change in the actual arch form because we're so crowded. Okay, so like here's an example, right? We've made it through. We took this canine that was all the way over here and we pulled it back here and then put that tooth in. And then we took this canine that was right here. We pulled it back here and shoved that one in or we're working on shoving that one in, right? Very minimal change. This is gonna be a nice U-shape form. And you can tell that these teeth are really wide. We haven't finished this case, but right, that's the change, right? Just because you know, your orthodontist says you should consider extractions, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have these drastic changes. You just need to ask about them, ask questions. Okay, well, there you have it. What should you do if you're crowded? Well, it depends. You, your provider, all those things. Complex system we've got going on. Time, cost, burden, predictability of outcome. Consider all those things. If your orthodontist says, hey, you should get teeth out, why? What are the risks that you're trying to avoid by taking out teeth? What are the benefits of taking out teeth? And then decide if those outcomes that the goals that they're discussing fit your value system. There is no right or wrong answer necessarily. There may be better or worse options depending on the situation, but I know this is really tough. Take home message again from me when deciding between the two there are pros and cons but remember extractions don't cause breathing issues extractions don't cause tmj problems and extractions don't ruin faces it's not that simple there are people that have teeth out that have no breathing problems that people that don't have teeth out that do have breathing problems there are people that have all of their teeth with tmj problems and there are people without all of their teeth, right? They take it out a couple that don't have TMJ problems. And there are people with extractions that have beautiful smiles and faces. And there are people without extractions that have imbalance of their face and smiles. So it's just not that tricky. Find a local provider that you can trust and connect with. If you know somebody who's considering because of their crowding, what options they have, tell them to come find me or send this video to them. Consider subscribing to the channel so that I can open your eyes to the wonderful world of straight teeth and beautiful bites. That's all I've got. Just a little PFO in so you know where you're going. Pack it out.